Hey, welcome to Loose Change. Most major credit cards. <laughs> I'm Jim Adams. Thanks for joining us. We're really glad you did. As always, another terrific show. Hang tight. I'm telling you. What's been going on here lately? Greg, I saw another report about uh, the economic situation in our area. Not doing so good. The median family income doesn't rate very high. And I thought, you know, I, I don't know. Recently, I was at the poorhouse, and everybody there seemed to be doing okay. So that worked out for them. Um, the New York Yankees said, uh, enough, Alex. They kind of forced Alex Rodriguez to retire. But he remains with the team, apparently, as a consultant. And uh, they want him to boost morale, if he can, keep things on the lighter side. They're going to have him hang around in the locker room and needle all the players. <laughs> he can do that. You hear about these uh, two United Airlines pilots were pulled from the flight from Scotland to the U.S. after they were caught drinking. You know, they got to keep check on this stuff. It, it happens. I know for me, <laughs> it doesn't shape up to be a pretty good flight if I see the pilot's name tag and it says Captain Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, no. Boy, Greg, good thing this is rehearsal. <laughs> No, it's not rehearsal. This is the real thing. <laughs> it's the same thing, isn't it? So. Hey, the NFL is back in Los Angeles. You probably know that. The Rams left St. Louis and returned to L.A. And a lot of people are excited about it, especially that first exhibition grade. Did you see it? I watched the game. They played the Cowboys. It was on TV. And they had a huge crowd at the L.A. Coliseum. So many notable people there on hand, including the Octomom. Remember that, that woman who had eight kids at one time? She was spotted sitting in C-section. <laughs> hey, you want to see who's coming up next? It's Coach Dick Hartzell right here on Loose Change. Hang tight. Better. All they want is a chance to be loved, to be your companion, to stand by your side. And what do they ask in return? Just a little love from you. Consider adopting a shelter pet from one of the great organizations in the Mahoning Valley. Proudly sponsored by Armstrong Positively Pets. Adopt a shelter pet. A friend for life. Welcome back to Loose Change. See, I wasn't kidding. Talk about a great guest. I had the great privilege to have sitting next to me, Coach Dick Hartzell. And uh, Coach, I can't thank you enough for, for being on the show. And what we like to do off the top, for those who don't know, and a lot of people do know, but uh, for those who don't, give us a little background, resume about yourself, where you're from, where you went to high school and college, and, and where you played ball, and, and where you coached, just, just to get the ball rolling. Well, as a youngster, we were living in Tampa, Florida in 1948. Really? And I got the bladder of a football. I kicked it and it blew up in the air. And I thought I was gonna be a professional place kicker. There you are. So I started kicking, chasing a football, got pretty good at it, and uh, played at Struthers High School, scored 39 points as a sophomore, and then went on to walk on tryout at Youngstown University, made the football team, had the privilege to play for Coach Beatty for four years, uh, boxed in the Golden Gloves, was lightweight champ, uh, my older brother was a professional boxer, so I didn't have a choice. I had to learn yeah, to box. I, so. I was his punching bag. <laughs> but uh, had, he really helped out on the fitness and the conditioning side. You know, I started training really hard in 1952. I was 12 years old and running, and I'm still running. I run in a culvert. Uh -huh. I run in a culvert one to five miles, three to six days a week. I stretch every day. Uh, you know, I squat 500 pounds on the bands. So, you know, I'm in pretty good health as far as that goes. Yeah, look at this. Um, it, 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 we, obviously, <laughs> he's doing pretty well for himself, but you, you got, uh, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more of, of, about uh, Dyke Beatty, of course, and playing for him at YSU, but uh, uh, you, you got into, uh, into coaching and had several stops in the, you know, along the way in high school. 
Yeah, it really was. Uh, I, I started it uh, in uh, Shelby, Ohio, right after I graduated. Uh, what happened was my family's wife moved her to California to get her away from me. So then I drove to California, married her, and brought her back. <laughs> and uh, we just celebrated 52 years. Nice. Uh, last two weeks ago. So anyway. Congratulations. We went from California to Shelby, Ohio, where I did my first year as a freshman coach. Then I got the head coaching job at Greenford High School the next year. I was there one year, went to Latonia for three years. Uh, from Latonia, I went to Boardman as assistant coach for one year, to Struthers two years, and then West Branch, I had really a super stint over there at uh, seven years. I had a lot of fun there. Well, we won the conference, uh, Morning Valley Conference, three times, so we had a lot of fun. I remember that, and I had fun as well. Um, I started my broadcast career down that way in Salem, and I started doing sports and play-by-play -play of both Salem and West Branch, and I recall when you were coaching and you gave me material and information, and you, you did stuff out there that was way ahead of the curve. I mean, it was a lot of fun to, to call as an announcer. Well, I, I believe in, in, in wide open football. Yes, you you did. know, I ran uh, a, a motion pass game, ran the, I got the uh, unbalanced line from Tom Bata, who was the head coach at Warren Harding at that time. Mm -hmm. He had won the state championship. And I called him one day and he was busy. He, I says, I'll meet you on, at midnight, I'll meet you at five in the morning, whenever. Okay, fine. So I went out, he gave me the unbalanced line. I put the motion mm -hmm. pass game which I got from Coach Trestle's father at Baldwin Wallace College. So I put in the motion pass game, and we just had a lot of fun. Yes, you, you did. Know? And uh, I, I convinced the kids to fight until there was no time on the clock. I mean, 35% uh, of the, our games were won with less than two minutes on the clock. So I was really proud of the fact that my kids battled, and I always taught them, Yes, sir. No, sir. I don't know, sir, but I'll find out in a hurry. They got a manners and respect lesson uh, when they came to play ball for me. And I, I met with the officials before the game, and I said, if one of my people addresses you and doesn't say, sir, mm -hmm. first, that's coach or player, throw them out of here. Mm -hmm. Because every time, you know, I wanted that manners and respect with the officials. Well, it paid off, that's for sure. You know, that time I was doing that, Scott Wolf was the quarterback, yes. and I think you even ran shotgun and stuff back yes. then and when nobody was really doing that. Right. We were, I ran everything. Yeah, you did. Motion <laughs> pass games. I mean, I had to really... <laughs> shotgun. You, you know, locked in. It amazes me. I watch these guys, you know, when, when they're backed up at the goal line, at the two-yard line mm -hmm. or something, and what do they run? A dive play. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to run a boot pass. I used to run the boot pass, come out of there 40, 50 yards. Because they weren't expecting Everybody's it. Everybody's loaded up and on their heels. Yeah. Everybody's in there. I would fake the dive like we're going to, and then the quarterback would roll out, pitch it down the field, 30, 40 yards, and the boot pass worked out super uh, in pressure situations. And, uh, I mentioned we get back to Dyke Beatty. What did, I assume you took some things from him and implemented that into your coaching strategies or philosophies? Uh, yeah, he, he ran what they called the side saddle uh, offense that, at yeah. that time. And the direct snap, yeah, the snap to the quarterback and the, all, all the action that was going on in his backfield was confusing for the opponents. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I mixed uh, some of Coach Beatty's stuff in there and the, the conditioning program, all of that stuff I picked up from, you know, from mm -hmm. Coach Beatty. See, so fun guy to be around, good man to be around. I really, I enjoyed my four years there. I did not have a bad experience uh, playing for Coach Beatty at Youngstown University. Mm -hmm. And all the guys I got to play with, you know, I love them all, man. I mean, we had s s guys that had a lot of fun. And it's like I tell kids, the friends that you make in football or sports will last you the rest of your life. And I got buddies that, uh, you know, Franny Lyons is in uh, South Carolina. Uh, we still communicate back and Good. forth. And we room together uh, when we traveled. So we're still buddies. What, uh, in your mind, still at this point, uh, makes a good coach? What makes a good coach? I think if you provide uh, discipline and conditioning for the kids, I think you, you need conditioning yes. and you need good discipline, and then you have, I, I think, to me, discipline was first. Yeah. I was, uh, in my phys ed classes, I taught 
Yes, sir, no, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Manners and respect. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was either get that right or you have a problem. I mean, I, hey, that's where it, it starts in, in a lot of situations like, yeah. you know, not just out on the field or whatever. But, uh, and, you know, I have so many coaches say this, and, and I probably would think it's the same for you, in that, um, you know, high school sports, football, you, you, you're out there to, to compete and obviously to win. But at that level, there's so much more, uh, you know, that, that can be gained in terms of, you know, building and, and uh, cultivating young people to become adults and life lessons and things like that, right? We're talking about life. That's exactly right. And that's what you should learn in football, how to battle when things aren't going your way. Yep. And keep fighting. Fight. I used to tell my kids, fight till you can't breathe. Just fight. Get, fight for them. It's going to take me, it might take me 48 minutes to figure these guys out. <laughs> Keep fighting. And, and my kids did. And mm -hmm. that's why 35% of the games are won with less than two minutes on the clock. I was always proud of that. I love that idea with my kids. We're going to take a break, Coach. Uh, Dick Hartzell will be back here on Loose Change. Hang around. The history, the sports, the stories, the events. Armstrong Local Programming puts the focus on our community. Watch to learn about new events or discover the rich history of our area. You can find local programming on your local programming channel and on demand. Want even more? Subscribe to the Armstrong One Wire channel on YouTube. It's our town all the time with Armstrong Local Programming. One Wire, infinite possibilities. Welcome back to Loose Change. I'm Jim Evans with Coach Dick Hartzell. And Coach, uh, uh, after football, you got uh, involved in broadcasting. Yes, I did. What, uh, what was that experience like for you? I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed doing the ball games. And uh, I guess on the YSU games, I was a little too harsh. So they had me leave the broadcast. <laughs> but uh, truthfully, truthfully, I really enjoyed it. I'm a coach. I get mad when I see dumb You're football. You're passionate about uh, it. I, I get fired up, man. And we're, if, if you make a dumb play, that's what it is. You want it to call, oh, he'd like to have that back. I'm sorry. I can't say that. I, that's no way that could come out of my mouth other than, oh, boy, I get fired up. But you were able to, you know, I remember watching and listening, uh, even on the radio side, you know, that you had that, and I've had the good fortune to be involved with a lot of coaches and, and people who have been around football that, they can see things that the average fan doesn't see, and you, you did that, uh, you translated that for, for, for the fans and listeners and viewers. Right. If the, I, would, I studied the offensive, I was a line coach. I spent my time with That's the where line. it starts, right? Uh, yes, sir. If, if, the, if you don't get the job That's done right. up front, it's not going to get done. That's right. So I watched the lineman, and if I could see a guy if his shoulder tipped one way or if his hand so you see or how things, he right. said, mm -hmm. I, you know, I could pretty well call the play and anticipate what was coming on that, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, you've seen changes in the game, uh, and obviously a lot of things that we see now you know, that they are being implemented in high school, uh, you were doing you know, a lot of that back when you were coaching, and uh, is, is it change for the better? Oh, yeah, I think it, I, I was at the uh, Columbiana Crestview game there last week. That was a great football game. Yes. Uh, uh, Columbiana came out, they were throwing the ball around, and then Crestview tightened it up and went to an I formation, a balance line, right. and they ended up pulling the game out with three seconds on the clock. That's, that's super. Those kids just kept fighting and fighting, and they have uh, Jordan Murphy there who came in to me as an eighth grader at jump stretch, mm -hmm. and that's why I was at the ball game to see Jordan play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, he looks outstanding, and he signed with uh, Bowling Green. Oh, great. And, uh, you know, he, uh, John Simon, who's playing mm -hmm. in Houston. Yep. Okay, he came to me as a fourth or fifth grader at the jump stretch, trained all the way through Ohio State, and then went on to the NFL. But, uh, you know, it's just super to see these kids uh, develop and mature. You know, and you mentioned that, that particular game, and I've already had a couple great games uh, to see so far this season. Um, and, and athletics at, at this level, at the high school level, again, specific to football, this is the game at its purest sense um, to me. You know, it's the, 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 the participants are out there, and they are, they are there because they love the game, and they're there to play and compete 
and, and to learn, and there's not much ancillary stuff that are, that's involved. Now, football, if you work with the kids, you get them an offense, get them a defense, try to keep it simple, and, uh, you know, let them go play the game, and then again, fight, and just keep playing. I, I spent a lot of, we, at West Branch, we had a big old cornfield. We used to run, yeah, around, I remember that, we yeah. used to run around the cornfield out there as part of our training, and I ran it with the kids. You know, I trained with my kids all the time. It uh, had a lot of fun. It, it, it you know, from your perspective, uh, again, it, it can be a complicated game, but it's really a simple game, isn't it? Football. Yes, yeah. Basic uh, belly two wedge, belly six G's a trap, belly eight leads a flip on the outside. Wait, I need to write this. Flip. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it was three or four plays, and I kept it real simple. You know, they, you watch the, the pass game today, and everybody wants to sit up, oh, pro pass protection. No, that's a waste of time. I'm sorry. I, it's not a waste of time, but I mm -hmm. get fired up over it. I use turnback protection and roll the quarter, half roll. Yeah. My quarterback got sacked eight times the in the whole season, mm -hmm. not in one game. My quarter, Johnny Common got sacked eight times the whole wow. season because we did the turnback protection. If no one was there, pop out and get that guy coming on the backside. Run the fullback front side, and you don't have any pressure on your quarterback. That's why I did it. You obviously had good kids to work with when you were coaching, when you played, when you were coaching. And, and now you, wor you work with kids, as you mentioned, uh, you know, and what you're doing now, what you've been doing in a different way. Have you seen much of a change in the kids uh, from back then to now, or are kids just kids? Kids are kids, and they come in and they work, and they want to learn. Uh, yeah. Now, if they're lazy kids, they leave. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't deal with lazy kids. <laughs> so they come in, they work hard, they put out, or they're gone. That's all. It's real simple. It's not complicated. Uh, I just left Bethany College in West Virginia. Young man down there had a high ankle sprain. Uh, he sprained it yesterday. They had him in a boot and iced it, okay? Uh, I had him running in 52 oh, minutes amazing. today, and he's going to play on Saturday, which wow. he would have been out for 12. To f That's why ice should be illegal. It should be illegal on ankle sprains. Mm. They shouldn't put it on people. People need to learn how to do this. I'm working in the hospital over at Beaver Falls. I've rehabbed 60-some patients over there, and every one of them got better. Hmm. I mean, you can. Mike Ruby is the director. Call Mike Ruby and find out. Oh, there's, there's no question uh, from my end. But, uh, you know, you moved on to the, the people know you from Jump Stretch, and you, you invented that to a whole concept. Um, how did that get going? How, how did that originate, and how did you make, make it come to fruition? That's a super question. How, anyone can invent. Anyone can get a U.S. patent, and anyone can go from zero to the world marketplace, and it only takes $6 million. Now, I started in Shelby, Ohio at $4,500 for the year and 180 bucks for coaching football, so I didn't quite save it up. <laughs> what happened was I was the head coach at West Branch. Mm -hmm. I believe that part of strength training should be done as fast as possible with the weight on your back. So I patted a barbell. I had my kids explode up. Kid hurt his back. Kid hurt his neck. Kid hurt his knee. I asked a question, why couldn't this be done on some kind of a rubber product? The name Jump Stretch flashed in my head. So I wrote on a piece of paper, Develop Jump Stretch. I didn't know what it was at mm -hmm. that time. I got a wife, three kids, teaching, coaching, and selling insurance part-time. So it sat there. I got out of teach, coach, went full-time insurance. I was making good money, but I really didn't like it. Yeah. And so I came home one day, I told the wife, I said, I'm going to develop Jump Stretch earn a living doing something I enjoy and something that relates to my background. So I started out, developed the board, the bands, the adhesive belt, was able to get a U.S. patent on it. Then uh, Dan Wathen did a study at the university where he took half of the team on barbell, half of the team on rubber bands. The half on rubber bands outperformed the barbell strength wow. gains, vertical jump, and speed. There's no reason to put a barbell on a youngster's back nor to do a deadlift unless you're a power lifter. Mm -hmm. we, we, kids get hurt every day in this country lifting weights. Rubber band squats, we don't get any injuries. And you can work with more weight, and the results are superior. That's what's exciting about the bands. So the whole concept is just uh, 
to be uh, more muscle friendly and, and physically friendly as you know with the with the the band concept as opposed to the okay when you the take physical when you take weight. a weight it's 10 pounds here 10 pounds here 10 pounds here okay that's called isotonic okay rubber bands are variable isotonic so it's three pounds here five ten eight twenty and it goes up so as the joint angle improves on a squat you get a better result on vertical jump 40 yard dash and strength because you're getting the max load as you come through the top of the lift instead of at the bottom where you got the barbell and where your knees are in danger. Now obviously you do different uh, exercises for different muscles with, yes. with, with the bands. The, probably that. the biggest thing that would help people out is the straight leg pull down, abduction, adduction, it, to develop the groin area for sitting lower in basketball. I was strength coach in the World Basketball League for yes. four years. Zero downtime from sprained ankles, two world championships, two second place There was a great athlete there too, yeah. There yeah. Was, Mario Ely yeah. came to me, he came in to me 15 minutes early before every practice to work on the movement stuff. And uh, the, the ab ad straight leg pull down on the bands is incredible because it gets a player to play lower. Okay. You've had, I mean, you've had the opportunity to work with other professional teams as well, right? Oh, yes, yes. I, we, we do with the Steelers right now. I've been with the Browns, uh, you know, Washington Redskins. Indians, right, too? You were doing In Cleveland Indians. Mm -hmm. When Fernando Montez was there, I had pretty strong input with the Cleveland Indians flexibility program. How, and, and again, this can help people in, in any age category. I mean, you, can, you can go from here to there and everybody can benefit. Okay, I was shocked this morning, the other day when I saw ITT Technical School close. We were just talking about Okay, that. I did a seminar there last week. A lady came in, she said she has hip pain. Well, how long have you had it? Since birth. They popped my hip out of the socket at birth. And I've been in pain for 45 years, and in five minutes, I had her out of pain. Just a couple exercises, and the hip popped back into place. They wasted 45 years of pills when it could be taken out in a few minutes. That's what they're finding out at the hospital at Beaver Falls. They love me over at Beaver Falls Hospital because every patient, I took a guy out of, the, out of a wheelchair. He had two strokes. Hmm. I had him doing squats with 100 pounds. <laughs> I said, just, you know, just talking to you now and, and previously and uh, watching you, and uh, uh, that you probably have maybe more of a passion for this than you did for football and, and teaching, have, or just as much. Yes, yes. I, I love what I do. I, when, the day I, I walked on at Youngstown University, they, they brought me in and they said, what are you going to study? I said, what? Yeah, you got to go to class. Yeah. I said, really? I, You're supposed to. They said, I don't know. I said, they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, I don't know. What do you like? I said, gym class. They put me in phys ed. I'm still in gym class. Yeah, you are. That was 56 Wearing years shorts. ago. Yeah, Fif yeah. Oh, my goodness, yeah, and I love it. I, I, wouldn't, I have a career, not a job. And that's, that's what I tell kids perfect. every day. Yeah. Get something you love to do, and then you can do it. For, I have no plans for retirement. Retirement Why? for old people. Yeah. I got nothing to do with that. Well, you're going to show us, uh, I believe, how you're not so old here. And uh, <laughs> we're going to take another break and be back with a little bit more with Dick Hartzell right here on Loose Change. Stick with us. Get more than movies with Armstrong On Demand. Tune to Channel One or find On Demand with your remote. Search for shows alphabetically by series name or by network. Children's programming can be found in the kids folder. Find your show and start watching. These shows are free with your Armstrong subscription. Watch as much as you want, when you want, at no extra cost. Your shows on your time. Armstrong, one wire, infinite possibilities. Back on Loose Change, Jim Evans along with Dick Hartzell. Normally we have a different type of band in here, but uh, maybe uh, a little more beneficial here today. Coach is going to demonstrate a little bit with the, uh, with the stretch bands. Show us what you got. What we do on the ankles is we put the band around the waist, get the knee out of the way, put the band down around the arch of the foot, take the ankle, twist it in, twist it out. You're building the muscles on the side of the leg, which protects the ankle. In the World Basketball League, we did this every pre-practice. Push in, get the knee out of the way, move the band up on the ball of the foot, push it up and down, 
bend the knee again. You're isolating all the muscles in the calf area and you're protecting the ankle from these sprains. Then we take this off, we go into the flexibility program. Now when I talk about flexibility, and anyone can change their flexibility. When I played bow at Youngstown University, I could reach to here. Today I reach out to here. Today I can go over here and do this, okay? <laughs> now, I, trust me, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do, I wouldn't have even thought of doing that when I was playing college ball. This is actually happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you change your flexibility and kick old age in the butt? You take the band, you lay back on the floor, you lock your knee, pull your toe up, and pull. I started here. You're gonna get pain back here when you pull up. Yeah. You got little characters that live here, they're called Golgi tendon. They don't like to stretch, so when you pull up, they say, ouch. Okay, well you can't listen to them, so bump them, bump them. Then the first round, we go here. Bend and squeeze. Lock the leg out, it changes back here. First round, no pain. Second round, we'd like a little bit of pain. Push the band up. Third round, all the pain you care to enjoy. <laughs> squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And truthfully, I don't feel that. If, if you would train these muscles, if they would take the athletes every day, you need, this is every day. It's not every other day, it's every single day. Take the foot, put it out here, bring the leg up, stretch it out, push out, bring it up here, cross it over, take the back, push it out, bring it up, pull, stretch, and again, there's no issues there. Low back. If you have back pain, you can do this sitting in a chair, laying in your bed. Take the band around behind the back. Block it. Put it on the knee. Now, if you have a lot of hair over here, it will, <laughs> it will pull on the hair. <laughs> okay, so here. Low back pain. If I push my belly button forward, push it back, bring the knee in. Every move you make down here is an attack on back pain. So then you roll back. Pull the knees up, push on the thighs, move the hips around, roll to the side, pull up, push down, pull across, go to the other side, up, down, and across. Drive the hips off the floor. This strengthens your butt, which protects your low back. So that you can roll over on all fours, come over here, tilt one side, tilt the other side. Any move you make here is going to help to reduce back pain. So we straighten the leg for out. me. <laughs> Take it off. If you want upper body work, then you come into here. Just a moment here, left here. So what step else on a band. Upright rows. Chest. Reverse curl. Bench press. Take the band. Make sure your thumbs are on the front side. If your thumbs end up out here, they dislocate and it slows down the workout. Bring the band over the top. Push it. Here's a bench press. You got your chest going on here. Rotator cuff. Shoulders. Take it here. Don't. Baseball pitchers. Don't put ice on your shoulders. Biggest waste of time in the world is putting ice on your shoulder. It delays the healing process, and it'll end it, your career. You've got it all covered. Now, now again, <laughs> you tell everyone, because uh, I wasn't quite sure. I kind of had an idea. You are how old now? 76. You believe that? 76. I, you know. Well, I'm just, you know, if, uh, if we go here, boom, right here. Okay. So that's what it's all about. Impossible. It's a, thank you, sir, for no, having me. It's thank, a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Always great to see you. Anytime. You're, you're tremendous. I'm just trying to stretch my grocery dollar. <laughs> if I can do that, <laughs> I'm happy. But we'll have to check with the coach. All right, we'll be back to wrap it up uh, here on Loose Change. To help feed the hungry in our community. To date, food and funds have been distributed to over 20 food banks. These organizations need our support throughout the year. Donations can be made at your local Armstrong office. Also, look for special breaking bread events in your area. All efforts benefit area food banks and soup kitchens. For more information, like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Armstrong One Wire. <laughs> what a workout just watching, watching Coach. If you need uh, me to stretch, Greg, uh, we're going to have to go get him because I can duplicate that but uh, thanks so much to coach dick hartzell and for greg roten i'm jim evans we'll catch you next time right here on loose change we will